Good morning. I am Muriel Bowser. I'm the mayor of Washington, D.C., and I'm here to provide a uh, briefing uh, to the media and the residents of the District of Columbia on uh, district operations for uh, this blizzard of 2016. Uh, let me say that the, the storm uh, has descended on the district as we thought it would. Uh, it started snowing about 1 p.m. on Friday. It snowed um, all the afternoon, evening, all night, and it continues to snow this morning. Uh, we are, have reports of up to 13 inches of snowfall in Washington, D.C., uh, and we expect uh, the second half uh, of this storm uh, through today uh, to drop another uh, up to 10 inches of snow. We also expect the winds to be the most uh, significant uh, today. Uh, our message, and we need the public to, to listen, uh, is to stay home and to stay off of the streets. Uh, that includes people who are attempting to drive, uh, but it also includes people who are walking. Our plows and emergency vehicles cannot do their jobs with you on the streets. I will say from my own observation, uh, driving through the streets, um, people walking down the street, in the middle of the street, in these conditions, is very dangerous for our vehicle operators and very dangerous for you. The visibility is poor and you cannot be seen. Uh, there are too many people on the streets, both driving and walking. We need you to stay home. Uh, this is an emergency event uh, and we are very much still in our emergency response phase. Please stay home. We have uh, reported our concerns about power outages, and I'm pleased to say that we have no reports of power uh, out in Washington, D.C. at this time. Uh, we are also very grateful to all of the employees of the District of Columbia who have been working on 12-hour um, shifts, and we are into our third shift uh, now. Our 911 operators, for example, uh, last night uh, answered 300 calls and everybody received uh, a response. I want to turn now uh, for the remainder of the briefing to our Director of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, Chris Geldhart, who will talk to you uh, about the district's um, stages of response to uh, this blizzard. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I am Chris Geller. I'm the director of D.C.'s Homeland Security and Emergency Management Agency, and I want to echo what the mayor said. Um, in this storm that we're in right now, we are very much still in the emergent phase. We haven't got to the response phase as we look at it from emergencies. We're in the emergent phase because the storm is still happening. We are still in that time frame when real bad things can happen. Once we get past this emergent phase, once the snow stops, um, and the winds calm, then we will get into the response phase. And that's when we'll be looking at how we clean the city up, how we do our damage assessment, how we look at the things that we need to do to get to our recovery phase, where we'll try to get all of the snow out of the district. This is a multi-phased event. It's going to take us time to do all of that. And as we said before, we will be dealing with snow throughout the week. So again, we're in the emergent phase right now. It is still dangerous outside. It's cold. The wind is blowing. We got 50 mile per hour gusts, and we're still going to get at least another six to 10 inches of snow from this event. We responded last night with our first responders, our plows, to ensure that we can still perform the functions of the emergency services in the District of Columbia. And as the mayor mentioned, we were successful in that. We were able to get and respond to the calls that came in for service um, and make sure that our paramedics, our EMTs, our police forces could get to where they needed to be last night for the residents. And that's what we would like to continue to do today. So again, to echo the mayor, we need folks to stay off the streets so that we can continue to do that emergent phase and get to those folks that need us today. That's all I have. And we'll take questions. Yes, sir. In hindsight, would a travel ban have been a good idea? 
You know, we have said from the beginning that we want folks to stay off the street, um, then to announce a travel ban. Um, you know, that, that's, I don't know what more that would have got us. Um, we're asking folks to stay off the street. We're telling folks the responsible thing to do is to allow the city services to do their job, to get to those folks that need them. Um, I think that's what we need to do. Fatalities or injuries uh, related to the storm so far? We have no reported fatalities uh, from the storm so far. Chris, what do you recommend? Even in the dark, before dawn this morning, saw several people walking down the street. And I, I asked, are you on your way to work? Yes. Where do you work? Can't tell you. I mean, we have a lot of people in D.C. who have sensitive jobs and didn't, couldn't get in their cars and get out to the streets. What do you recommend people do if they, if they have essential jobs and there's no public transit, no cabs, and they can't drive their car? You know, it, look, Folks are going to have to make that decision of what they're going to do um, for those jobs. Uh, the federal government uh, is closed, um, and the district government is closed except for essential and emergency personnel. Um, those that have essential and emergency jobs, um, as we have in the district, we ensure that we have the ability to get those folks where they need to. Um, all of the emergency employees for the District of Columbia that have been working the 12-hour shifts, all three of them so far, we've gotten in and back from work. Um, I think that, you know, those organizations need to think about how they're moving their employees so they're not on our streets. And can, Other you, questions? can you confidently say, if, say someone is having a heart attack on a side street where you can't drive an ambulance in, how do you get to those people? So the manner in which we do that, we, uh, we've actually uh, embedded uh, our Humvees from the National Guard uh, with our emergency services. Uh, we will bring uh, the emergency services and the apparatus as close to there as we can. We'll utilize Humvees. The, uh, the, the uh, fire service also utilizes ATVs. And if we need to, as Chief Lanier said yesterday, we'll get out and we'll walk to them. Let me, let me just add, uh, I had the opportunity on my, on my way in today to stop at two fire companies, 22 and 24, who are on Georgia Avenue. Uh, and uh, they both have been on runs all night and, and through the morning. Uh, they do have access to the, the Humvees. They had not had to use them. Um, they used their, uh, our standard equipment. <clears throat> Said there were 300 911 calls and that everyone was responded to. Was that, does that mean you actually go out and call 300 cases? And were there any long delays or serious matters that were affected by the snow? Even if you eventually made it, were you held up? I don't know if we can speak to the, the specific re response times, um, but we, we feel that all of the, the calls that we got were, were closed out successfully. I don't know if you have anything to add, Karima. No delays. I would say no, nothing uh, notable to report now. Mayor, do you have a sense of the timeline for digging out once the snow stops? I mean, do you think schools will be open on Monday? How long do you think it's going to be until the city is open? Well, let me emphasize what the director said, and actually I'm going to have him emphasize it. We're, we're in an emergency response situation. Uh, we have a blizzard. We've seen half of it. The other half is yet to come, and we don't know how uh, much more significant that's going to be in terms of when. Uh, so we are very much focused on keeping our city safe and our citizens safe. That's why we want them to stay home, uh, and that's why we have have all of our snow apparatus out to keep our mains uh, passable for emergency equipment. Um, so Chris can say a little bit more. Sure. Uh, that's the big question, right, for everybody right now. It's a big question for us as well. We don't know what the rest of this day is going to hold for us. Um, plus, we're going to have winds in excess of 25 miles an hour going well through tomorrow. So even those roads that we plow when the, when the snow stops, you've got 25 mile an hour winds that are going to blow snow back on them. So the question of when, we got to see when the, when the emergency ends, we do our assessment of what we have, we look at the equipment and everything that we have and we're gonna, how we're going to apply to it, and then we're going to make our assessment at that point. Do you have uh, enough equipment? Do you feel like you have all the snow removal equipment you need? You know, we've been working uh, since early uh, this week to ensure that we were bringing in all the resources that we could possibly get and what we would need to respond to the event. Um, we have the resources in hand. Um, we're still looking for some resources. Uh, we have requests out to uh, other states for our recovery phase. Again, we're in the emergent. We'll do the response where we're plowing and cleaning the streets, and then we'll go into the recovery phase where we're trying to get all the snow out of here. Um, we're looking for some of the equipment, some additional equipment, to speed that end part of the recovery. What kind of equipment? Snow melters? We're looking, at snow mel we're looking for snow melters. We're looking for additional dump trucks. Um, those are the kinds of things we're looking for right now. Have you guys been in touch at all with 
partners at Pepco, the fact that we've gotten through this far without any major outages, are they hopeful? Should people watching and listening be hopeful that if we've gotten this far, we're going to be okay? Or are these next hours perhaps, you know, troublesome? So uh, about 1 o'clock last night, um, I was uh, – in the emergency operations center with our PEPCO representative when we had 1,500 people go out of power. Um, they quickly recognized what the issue was. We had a feeder lockout situation, and they were able to rectify that within an hour. Um, so yes, we are with PEPCO the whole way. But for someone who has not lost their power, can they assume if they've gotten through this far, they'll be okay or, or not? Again, we're still in the emergent phase of this. It is still a blizzard outside, folks. The wind is blowing in excess of 35 miles per hour. We're getting gusts over 50 miles an hour. We're expected to get another 6 to 10 inches. Let's put that in perspective. If we didn't have the 13 inches we have on the ground, we would all still be standing here saying we're going to have a big snowstorm with 6 to 10 inches. And that's what we've got left in the storm with already over a foot of snow on the ground. So are we out of the woods? No. No, this is still very much a dangerous storm. Other questions? The, how MPD has been handling the, the conditions and whatever kind of the types of calls you guys have been responding to? Uh, we handled uh, a below average number of calls last night. Our response times are, believe it or not, consistent with the, what they normally are. I think the significant drop off in the number of calls helps us to get to our response, you know, keep our response times up. Um, so we've a variety of calls. We have been engaged in, up until about 1.30 or 2 in the morning. We had a lot of officers engaged in trying to dig people out that, that came out on the streets and got stuck. That seemed to drop off after 1.30 this morning, uh, and then it started to pick back up around 6.30 this morning. There's a lot of people coming out on the roads with two-wheel drive vehicles. I can tell you right now, we're at a point now where four-wheel drive vehicles are getting stuck. So if you don't have... well. You shouldn't be on the street at all unless you are an emergency worker. But if you, even with four wheel drive right now, we are seeing people get stuck um, where they can't get through. And then they're making our roads impassable so then we can't get through. Um, we deployed 26 uh, Humvees for responses last night. We have not had to use them to reach any call for service yet. I think the second part of the storm, we'll probably have to start relying on them a little bit more. But so far, um, officers have made good response times on all their calls. Yes, I know I had some questions earlier about a missing uh, child. Uh, we have located him. He is safe. He went to a friend's home, uh, and they took a nap. And he is now awake and uh, safe, and we've uh, reunited him with his family. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we expect uh, to make another a regular briefing at 5 p.m. at this location. And uh, before we do that, I want to acknowledge uh, one of the members of our council of the District of Columbia, uh, who represents Ward 1 in Washington, D.C., um, and the Reeves Center is located in Ward 1. And let me uh, acknowledge the Ward 1 council member, Brianna Doe. There she is. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Mayor, and thank you to your entire team. Um, as you can see, we're holding down the fort here in Ward 1. Um, and I, I cannot reiterate enough what we've been saying to our constituents here in Ward 1, which is stay somewhere, wherever you are, be safe, um, and let us do our work uh, so that we can make sure that everybody who um, needs us urgently uh, has access to the services that we're providing. So thank you so much you. to your team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.